Valentine's Day? Woo! Ha! We got relationships, love, chocolate, whoa! Cute, funny cards. Yes. <laughs> I'm single. <laughs> But, you know, it's still beautiful. You know, I'm a hopeless romantic. Maybe I'll go shopping today and I'll bump into my soulmate. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, so today's fan fiction is uh, Oliver Wood x Hufflepuff Reader. So if you're not a Hufflepuff, leave. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm actually a Hufflepuff. So I'm like, yeah! But um, if you're not a Hufflepuff, just... <laughs> you're converting today. <laughs> Um, uh, so if you want to go read this fan fiction because you're like, your voice is annoying, you talk too loud, just go away. Uh, just click that link below and, uh, you, you'll, you'll get there. Um, and if you like the music, go click the link below to get the music. So make sure to go support the author because we love authors in this community and let's get into this, guys. Woo! Wow, that was a lot. I'm out of breath. <laughs> when you suggested to Oliver that he should meet your family, he was ecstatic initially. After all, you and the Gryffindor have been dating for a little over a year, and you had met his parents over winter holiday. It was only a matter of time until he met yours. Oliver was delighted to hear that your family requested that he stay for a week in your home in the beginning of summer break. He was also excited to meet your little brother, who thought the world of you in Quidditch. And everything went swell from the moment the two of you stepped off the train. Your parents pulled you and Oliver into a tight hug, immediately welcoming him into your family. Right away, Oliver realized where you got your extroverted traits from. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Listener, he greeted politely. It's so nice to finally meet you. Elle talks about you all the time. All good things, of course. Your mother gushed at his manners and ruffled his hair. Your father settled for a smile and a firm slap on his back. Oh, what a kind gentleman. Elle picked such a nice fella, your mother complimented. Please call us Jane and Pat. Better yet, even call us Mom and Dad. Your face burned with embarrassment. Mom! You whined, throwing your bags into the back of your car. Your mom rolled her eyes in a joking matter, patting your cheek gently. Oh, fine, she said. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Oliver, dear, just place your luggage in the back and join Elle in the back seat. I hope you don't mind that we brought Timmy with us. He's far too young and wild to be left alone in a house for too long. Oliver poked his head into the back seat, and lo and behold, your darling brother was sitting there playing with a stuffed dragon. He gave Oliver a grin that could warm even Professor Snape's heart and waved joyfully. Hello, I'm Timmy, he said cheerfully. Oliver smiled back and your mom patted his back before helping you put away your last luggage. As if he turned off a switch, your brother stuck out his tongue. Oliver blinked in shock, not expecting such a reaction. Perhaps, Perhaps it was, it was a, a trick, trick of the of light. light. The Gryffindor thought to himself. Oliver glanced up again to see your brother sticking out his tongue again. Now, now I, I definitely, definitely saw, saw that. that. Something wrong? Your voice snapped Oliver out of his thoughts. Jumping in surprise, Oliver hit his head on the top of the car, biting his tongue to keep himself from swearing. Oliver turned to you. Well, he exclaimed awkwardly, smiling. I, uh, just met your brother. The two of you glanced back at the boy in the car seat, who waved cheerfully again. Ever the charmer, Oliver added with a grimace. You slid down the seat next to your brother, tickling his stomach. Hi, Timmy! Miss Timmy? Your brother giggled, making you grin even wider. Ow! I missed you so much! I was playing Quidditch in the backyard with Daddy, but it wasn't the same. Your brother pouted, opening his arms in request for a hug. You gladly did so, holding him tightly. Oliver got settled in the seat beside you, watching the scene unfold before him. He was such a darling with you. What was wrong with him? Oh, you little munchkin! You gushed, pulling away from the hug. Don't worry, all summer we're going to play Quidditch. I'll teach you some of the new moves Oliver taught me. You met Oliver, right? He's the captain of the Gryffindor Quidditch team. We'll play Quidditch together! How does that sound, bud? Your brother frowned for less than a second, but recovered with a typical smile. Yay! The car started, and for the most part, the car was silent. Light music played and small chatter ensued. But Oliver remained silent, watching other cars pass by. You slowly snaked your hand over to his, weaving your fingers together. Oliver turned his head to see you blushing lightly, but grinning nonetheless. 
In response, Oliver's face lit up, squeezing your hand in affection. From behind you, Oliver noticed your brother glaring daggers at him. Before Oliver could respond, your father started a new conversation. So, Oliver, he started driving towards another exit. You're a Gryffindor, right? Oliver cleared his throat. <clears throat> yes, sir. My entire family is, actually. Your father glanced at the three of you in the mirror. A smile was on his face. Ah, so is my father. He's a proud Gryffindor, that old man. He expected me to follow in his footsteps, but I got sorted into Ravenclaw. He didn't mind, of course, but I think he'll be delighted to meet you. The Gryffindor teen quirked his eyebrow. Do your parents live with you? Your mother shook her head. No, it would be too hectic with those two always playing Quidditch, she answered for your dad. Well, I'm sure he would join them. They live in the countryside with Elle's aunt. Quidditch! Your brother cheered, throwing his hands in the air. Everyone chuckled at the six-year-old. He ruffled his hair. You're the Gryffindor captain, right, dearie? Your mother asked. Marlin, three Quidditch captains in this car. First my husband, then Elle, now you. Oh dear, I fear another house competition this week. You grin cheekily at your mother, who was a proud Slytherin. Oh, Mom, we just got started. We have all four Hogwarts houses in this car. Prepare for a brutal defeat. Hufflepuff will triumph! Yeah! You punch the air, a determined expression on your face. Your brother cheered with you. Your parents shook their heads before turning back to the road. Oliver switched his attention to your brother. He was determined to get on his good side, or else this would be quite a difficult week to endure. What about you, Timmy? What house do you want to be in? I want to be a Hufflepuff like L. he answered. I don't want to be a stuffy Gryffindor. Your brother gave Oliver a sickly, apologetic smile. Whoops, I forgot, sorry. Oliver balled his fist tightly. His lips formed a thin line. Not a problem. The first night, Oliver walked downstairs to get a glass of water. The listeners were very hospitable and gave Oliver access to any part of the house, as long as he didn't make a mess or make any noise. When he reached the bottom of the stairs, he found your brother sitting on the sofa, swinging his legs as he took a sip from his sippy cup. He looked as innocent as can be, so Oliver proceeded to head to the kitchen when your brother called out his name. Oliver poked his head from the kitchen, seeing your brother wave him over to sit next to him. Timmy, Oliver whispered. It's quite late. Why are you still up? Your brother placed his cup on the coffee table. He furrowed his eyebrows, crossing his little arms on his chest. Wasn't he a wood? He started, glaring at him. Oliver was taken by surprise once more, not expecting a sweet little boy to talk with such authority. Elle only needs three men in her life, and that's me, Daddy, and Grandpa. You don't fit in the picture. Oliver took a deep breath, processing everything. Timmy, Oliver patted his thigh gently. I love Elle so much. They mean the world to me, and I promise you that I would never, ever try to hurt them. Oliver looked around the room for anyone hiding or listening, before leaning closer to the little boy. If you can keep this between you and me... I actually want to ask for their hand in marriage when we graduate from Hogwarts. Your brother pushed Oliver's hand away. I don't care. Stay away from Elle or you'll pay. Got it? The six-year-old skipped away, similar to how you would skip around in school. Oliver stared down at his shoes in shock, but shrugged it off immediately. After all, he was only six years old. What damage could he do? Apparently, your brother was a force to be reckoned with. For the next few days, your brother's antics have gone through the roof. Some of his pranks quite literally went through to the roof. He managed to throw a quaffle on top of your house. How he had such strength, Oliver had no idea. But he offered to get the quaffle. What your brother failed to mention was that there were countless amounts of crazy birds on your roof. Oliver barely managed to make it off the roof without falling off his broom but didn't escape without any scratches or feathers in his mouth. Oh, poor baby, you pouted, running over to your boyfriend. Oliver coughed out a few feathers, causing both of you to laugh. Your brother silently fumed behind your back, but left the yard to his bedroom, 
probably to go scheme some more. Oliver knew one thing, and that was that your brother gave the Weasley twins a run for their money. By the time it was Oliver's last night, your brother set up his final prank. It was the last dinner with the listener family, and everything was going surprisingly well. Your brother was well-mannered and quiet for most of the night. Oliver was on edge, fearing your brother's silence more than his antics. At the end of dinner, your mother reminded your boyfriend to have his things ready so he can use the flu system back home. You grabbed Oliver by his hand, bringing him upstairs to your bedroom, quickly closing the door and pressing your lips against his. By habit, Oliver snaked his arms around your waist and you raked your fingers through his hair. You pulled away, gasping for breath. A small smile was on your face, your cheeks tinged red. I've been waiting to do that for a long time, you confessed. I'm sorry, all. My parents and brother are always around and such. I should have told you beforehand. Oliver waved your apology off. Don't worry about it, love, he said, pressing his forehead against yours. I enjoyed my time here. Your family is very sweet. Your face lit up. My brother adores you, you know. He's always smiling at you during dinner. I'm sure he took quite the liking to you. Oliver had a sour expression on his face. Sure. Total angel, he said sarcastically. Your brother was anything but nice to him. Of course, there was times in front of you or your parents when your brother would put up an act, but Oliver knew your brother. You frowned, pulling away from Oliver's grasp. What do you mean? You asked, somewhat hurt. Do you not like my brother? Oliver scoffed. More like he doesn't like me. L, I'm telling you, he's out to get me. Don't be ridiculous, Oliver, you countered. He's six years old. What harm can he do to a 17-year-old? Oliver stormed off, heading to his room. You, annoyed, were hot on his tail. Quite a lot, actually. You pouted at your boyfriend. I can't believe you're upset with my younger brother, you muttered in disbelief. Oliver stayed silent as he reached for the doorknob. Opening his bedroom door, unbeknownst to him, a bucket full of old milk and cheese fell down on his head. Your jaw dropped, jumping away just in time not to get dirty. Oliver wiped the smelly concoction off his face, ears and cheeks red as he turned on his heel to face you. See? He demanded. He's literally out to get me. He told me that you don't need any more men in your life. As if on cue, your brother poked his head out of his room. A triumphant smirk appeared on his face, but disappeared when you picked him up. Timmy, did you do this? Oliver tapped his foot impatiently, waiting for his answer. Suddenly, your brother burst out in tears. Uh, I, I didn't mean to, he wailed. I, I w was scared he would take you away from me. You were incredibly confused. Why would you think that, Timmy? Oliver would never- He said he would ask to marry you! Your brother confessed, crying into your shoulder. You froze, your face burning up. You glanced up at Oliver, who was equally embarrassed. I know you'll say yes, and then you'll leave, and I'll be all alone! <laughs> you rubbed your brother's back, shushing him soothingly. I'm not leaving yet, I promise. And even if I did, I'll visit you as much as I can and write to you every day. How does that sound, bud? Your brother sniffled, looking into your eyes. So you'd say no? Oliver's breath hitched. You laughed, hugging your brother tightly. Well, no, you confessed, avoiding Oliver's gaze. The Gryffindor wanted to jump into the air in excitement, but refrained from doing so. I'd definitely say yes when the time comes, but not any time soon. Timmy, we have plenty of time to be together, and it's not like I'm gone forever. I promise you that I'll always be there for you. Your brother's eyes widened in hope. Promise? I promise. You set your brother on the ground, and he immediately ran to Oliver, hugging his waist and apologizing. Oliver laughed, accepting his apology right away. And for the first time that week, Oliver would actually sleep soundly. The morning Oliver had to leave, you were gloomy. Oliver tried to cheer you up, promising that he would write you every day by Al. With a tearful smile, you hugged Oliver tightly, secretly sneaking in a quick kiss on his lips while your parents weren't looking. 
When you pulled away, your brother gave Oliver a sweet hug with no hidden motives. Visit soon, Kay? Your brother told him. Oliver grinned, ruffling your brother's hair. Of course, buddy. Keep practicing Quidditch with L for me, okay? But not too much. I don't want you to beat me. Your brother stuck out his tongue, only for Oliver to playfully do the same. Your brother giggled before going back to your mother's arms. Be sure to write us, sweetheart, your mother reminded him cheerfully. I'd love to be in contact with my future son-in-law. Oliver blushed, but hugged your mom anyway. Your father patted his back and shook his hand. I hope to see you soon, son, he told Oliver, a smile on his face. You make my children happy, and as their father, that's all I can ask for. Tell your parents we give them our thanks. You are a delight to have. Oliver beamed. Thank you, sir. The Gryffindor stepped into the fireplace, waving back to your family one last time. Your brother waved energetically, and you gave him a quick wink. Perhaps this wasn't the week he expected to have with you, but Oliver wouldn't change this week for the world. Ah, oh, this is cute. I want a brother like Timmy. I would like any sibling, actually. I'm an only child, and I need a sibling. Come on. <laughs> oh, this is so good, though. This was very, very well done. This is very cute. This was lovable. I loved everyone. Timmy was just hilarious, though. <laughs> oh, man. This is great. I was happy with this one. Yes. This is... Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, the next video that should be out is Plank All Over Me. I think it's Yoga Edition. I think that's what the title is. So, yeah, that should be interesting. That that should be interesting. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Um, <laughs>